You guys need a hey, sound check? In? Welcome to Libertarian Counterpoint. <laughs> this is your host, James Just. And with me is Mr. John Cameron over there, my favorite author. And he should be yours. Well, thank you, James. I appreciate that, that accurate introduction. No, why that introduction? I it wasn't, I, I, John, I don't know very many authors, so you are my favorite author. Oh, it's, okay. I'm completely okay. honest. Well, now you're taking it all away. Don't do that. I'm completely honest. I do know a couple. I'm just saying. I, do, I, I know you by name, John. That makes you my favorite author. <laughs> <laughs> and just to let everybody know, this, re this show is recorded last week, so some of the stuff we talk about, some things may have changed since, uh, you know, uh, some minor things may have changed when we talk about elections and things like that. There may be some uh, information that is out there that we don't yet have. So, but John, there was a, there was some self-reflection. No, there was or, uh, or a lack of self-reflection. Oh, Who knows? Self-deflection. That's actually a good one because this is. I are a writer. The, there is a couple of, of things that stuck with me when I watched kind of the left wing Democrat reaction to their, to their loss. And I, I get the emotional reaction, right? I get it. You poured a lot into it. You poured your heart and soul into it. It didn't go the way you want. It's like, it's like you're participating in the Super Bowl and you're on the losing side, right? It, niners, it's, niners, niners, niners. It, yeah. It's a heart. It's, it's devastating. It's emotionally crushing, especially when. Uh, everybody told you you were going to win, yeah, right? Right. Yeah. That that uh, you know Trump no way he can win. He's he's a fascist. He's a liar. He's a multiple felon. He's blah 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 blah. And our person is full of joy. Yeah, and so it's. So the question is, there's a lot of people blaming, blaming Harris, blaming Biden, blaming everybody but themselves, mm. John. Mm. This is the interesting thing. It seems like no one's willing to look in the mirror and say, you know, maybe our attitude had something to do with it. Maybe us pushing past whatever mandate we may have had during the last election yeah. Yeah. had something to do with it. Yeah. Maybe our cancel culture uh, instincts have mm. something to do with it. Maybe, maybe the the things that we chose to uh, in our isolated ivory towers have no connection to the the working people. Maybe we've disaffected uh, the middle class and the lower class in this country financially. Uh, maybe um, what we think is important is not important, and maybe what is important we're isolated from because we're rich and elite. Yeah. Uh, speaking of rich and elite, uh, a few days before the election, I was watching a, f uh, a football game, and we had, I think, a, camp a Kamala Harris campaign ad came on, and then a Trump ad, yeah. uh, campaign ad came on, and my wife, she looked at me, and she says, Trump's going to win, isn't he? So, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it was just, she saw it. She was not a Trump supporter, right? Yeah. Yeah. She, she actually broke her libertarian values and, and decided to vote for Chase Oliver because of, you know, women's issues right mm -hmm. that's uh, so she voted for uh, Kamala Harris she's yeah. I trying I have to do something to stop Trump kind of the thing mm -hmm. and it's like I told her your vote for Kamala Harris was meaningless but your vote for Oliver would have actually meant something yeah. would have meant much but it would have meant something well, in California um, enough people I, I knew I voted for Chase Oliver now if if California was actually representative of the rest of the country, most of the country other than New York and, and, and you know, California, um, you know, it made a difference. I might have voted for, despite the fact I'm a hardcore libertarian, um, I might have voted for, for Trump. And, and I, I don't know if people want to hear my reasons. I, we, we might, yeah, I, I'll just say um, Michael Schellenberger, who's on public now and who wrote some uh, he wrote a book, uh, San Francisco, and some other things. He used to be a, a hardcore green until his mentor said, you know, we've been wrong about all this stuff. Uh, we should be supporting nuclear power. And he freaked out, and he started looking at the science. And now, thank goodness we are. He, he said, uh, you know, why people voted for Trump. And, and it's because um, of the censorship, you know, the, the fact that people are being canceled, the, the uh, lawfare, the deep state, you know, hiding things that would have affected the election in a major way in the last election, lying about things that didn't exist in the last election. Uh, again, back to the lawfare. And, and, and there, the, you know, the, the stuff about, especially 
um, transing kids, you know, and, and just on and on and on, the things that you and I talk about all the time. And, and Trump is not a good man. He's not an honest man. I don't even know if he's a sane man. He's a smart man. He's a very smart guy. Um, but he was victimized by that stuff. And you and I, who are victimized by it on an everyday basis, have no, you know, recourse. But he's like the, the ch he was genuinely attacked by all of those things, and you know, called a fascist, and and um, you know, the fact that that the person who was most affected by it won the election uh, might mean that some changes this country needs to make in all those areas will happen. Now he's a lunatic on the economy, but um, the Democrats know uh, they they're they're doing the blame game. You know, uh, people are blaming Biden, they're blaming Harris, they're blaming everybody. But but like you talked about, looking in the mirror and say, what did we do wrong? Have we perhaps lost touch with the American people? Are the things that we think important are not important to the American people? Have we been successful in convincing them they should be? No. Is there a reason for that? Maybe because they aren't. We're the only ones that think they are. So anyway, I'm going on and on and on. Yeah, but it, there's no self-reflection. It's self-deflection. Yeah, there, there is no self-reflection. No. And you ask why you lose. That's yeah. why you lost. Uh, the rest of the country sees New York and California. And they said, we don't want that. And no. so that's what they've said. We don't want that. The, we don't want what California and New York have yeah. become. We don't want that in the rest of the country. Yeah. And for better or for worse, they viewed Trump as the only bulwark. Mm. between that. And so well, that's they, what it is. There are some other places. I mean, Oregon, Washington, <laughs> uh, parts of Colorado, uh, big cities basically everywhere that have progressive. And again, more lessons. We're going to talk about what's happening in California at some point. We talked about that this yeah, show. We, we got it. Yeah, we get it. Okay. Um, but uh, the real loser, who was the real loser last night? We, we talked about how Kamala Harris and the Democrats lost. But, you know, those are political wins and losses. Those things mm -hmm. happen, right? It's like a football game. You play mm -hmm. enough of them, you're going to lose on occasion, right? It's, it's kind of how it works. But the real loser was the mainstream media. They've been completely exposed yet again as untruthful. Mm. And not That's just... been reinforced. Not just not untruthful, exposed, reinforced, blatantly reinforced, untruthful reinforced. And, hypocr and, and full of hypocrisy and everything yeah. else we despise. And not it. untruthful because they're confused, but untruthful because they've be become a mouthpiece, just like the Justice Department, the FBI, the CIA, and all the other letter agencies the deep state, and now everybody realizes that the mainstream media, and I'm not just talking about TV, um, you know, at least there's some, there's an awful lot of AM stations that aren't along for the ride. I mean, NPR is just a joke. You know, the, uh, the magazines, Wired, was supposed to be about tech, was all about how this fascist is now going to get elected because of all the bad things he did. So. But mainstream media has been, once again, just useless. Useless. Yeah, Worse than useless, they've done themselves such a disservice that any tiny little advertising revenue you're thinking about throwing their way, you would now rather flush down the toilet. Yeah, and notice that the reaction that the, the, some of the viewers of, or I guess the readers mm -hmm. of the New, uh, LA Times and the Washington Post had when they said, ah, oh, we're just not going to um, endorse a candidate. Right, mm. they literally people literally flipped out. How dare you not endorse a candidate? Yeah. But think about the that's uh, not your job. Yeah, but think about the Just entitlement of that. The news. But think about the entitlement mindset that they have to have to uh, what you. I deserve. We deserve a uh, an endorsement from a newspaper, mm. right? Well, it, once they figured out, and then that so few people pay attention to the endorsements of newspapers or NPR or the B or any any traditional media uh, that by doing it they lose whatever tiny little bit of credibility they think they might have left. As Shouldn't have been doing it all along. As someone who's run for office, let me tell you there's a thing about endorsements. The only thing endorsements are actually good for is raising money. Yeah. Because when it comes to actually voters, they're actually more likely to single you out as a, a exclude you as because they'll look down they'll see who's endorsed you i don't like that person yeah. i'm not going to vote yeah. for this guy well, rather like if than i see the teachers union endorse somebody i'm voting for their whoever exactly is not endorsed by you cannot find somebody running for the school board that isn't endorsed by the teachers union because they're all hand-picked 
to support the teachers union. And if you do decide to run and you're not endorsed by them, they take all that unlimited amount of money you and I pay for and, and basically just beat you down. So, yeah, endorsed by the California Teachers Union, I'm out of there. Endorsed by the California Nurses Association, I'm out of there. Endorsed by many unions, I'm out of SEIU, there. SEIU, all yeah. these various unions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we talk about how California is, we're talking about California. Richard has some stuff to say about California and the aftermath of the election and specifically California exit. So let's see what Richard has to say this I'd week. I'd love to hear of the report from the field. I think that's way smaller than his farm. The uh, 24th or 14th, <coughs> 54321. Hi, this is Richard Fields with this week's report from the fields. Cal exit will continue. The voters of California have spoken and they will get what they have voted for, good and hard. According to early election results, it appears that many of the ballot propositions passed. They will all cost taxpayers of California more money. The only passing proposition that could possibly benefit taxpayers is Prop 36, which reclassifies some thefts under $950 from misdemeanors to felonies, putting more shoplifters who steal $949.99 worth of merchandise in prison will raise prison costs, but it will probably benefit the public at large by keeping more thieves locked up. Most of the rest of the propositions passed are going to cost the many taxpayers each a little more and benefit a select few quite a lot. Proposition two would raise 10 billion in bond money to build more new school buildings. The direct costs are borne by taxpayers the indirect costs fall to students who would learn more at private schools and their parents who would ultimately pay less for private education than they do for public education. The select few winners are building contractors and public education administrators and teachers. Proposition 4 authorizes a $10 billion bond slush fund to pay for ill-defined environmental benefits. Taxpayers lose a little bit each. Winners are the green new scam, climate fear mongers who would ben spend a lot on climate research and the solar and wind companies and environmental consultants who are unable to compete on a level field, a playing field with fossil fuels. Proposition 5 may be the worst of the lot. It reduces the majority needed to authorize local bond issues from two-thirds to 55%. Even if you believe the local projects are good ones, the sane way to fund them is pay as you go, not adding bond interest, which can make those projects cost several times what their cash price would be. Taxpayers lose, developers and lenders win. Luckily, this one seems to be going down to defeat. Proposition six, which was marketed as ending involuntary servitude in prisons, it means criminals won't even be required to pay in kind for their room and board. They're in prison for a reason. This just adds insult to injury. Everyone loses. Obviously, taxpayers paying more for prisoners' room and board, but also prisoners who will be denied an opportunity to learn work habits and maybe even a marketable skill to use upon their release. Fortunately, this one appears to be losing. Proposition 32 raises the minimum wage. Winners are those with low. Uh, winners are those low-skill workers who manage to keep their jobs. Losers are those who will be replaced by robots or whose employers will go out of business altogether. Econ 101 must still be in the curriculum somewhere. This one is losing. Proposition 33 makes it easier for local governments to impose rent control. Winners are those lucky enough to rent in a rent-controlled home. Losers are those who will be hard-pressed to find a home at all because of the reduction in home building that always accompanies rent control. Good news, this one is also going down. All in all, California voters have managed to add a whole bunch of new reasons for talented Californians to take their talents to friendlier states that are not California. That's this week's report from the fields. See you again next week. 
Thank you, Richard. That was always insightful, as always. Or oh, insightful as always. Oh, man, this is going to be a long night, John. No, it's not. It's a short <laughs> night compared to election night, bro. I don't know, John. I didn't much, much election coverage. I, I There's a meme out there <laughs> by one of these, I don't know, uh, anti-establishment yet right-leaning because they got the funniest memes. The ones on the left aren't funny. They're just vicious. Yeah. And it said, uh, uh, science proves that... Uh, Constantly refreshing your screen, looking at election results will help your candidate win. So I was like refreshing the screen like every minute because I wanted to see the up to date. I loved seeing the uh, that little meter that New York Times has talking about uh, probability of who's going to win. And, and very soon after the polls closed, it went whoosh, Trump. And I'm, I'm thinking, oh, my liberal friends are losing their minds right now. Yeah, I, so. All I did was every couple hours or so, I'd flip on YouTube, one of the live YouTube channels of mm -hmm. CNN or mm -hmm. MSNBC and just look at their faces. And that's all I had to do to yeah. see how it was going. Yeah. Yeah, if they got the somber faces, no, nope, Trump's winning. Uh, if, they're, if they're happy, then, you know, it's, it yeah. was it's so easy to read. Watched, we sat uh, in a bar in 2016 and watched it, and they just refused to admit it. I thought they were going to have breakdowns on screen. And one of the, oh, one of the meme, memes uh, showed that Joy Reid actually exploding, you know, out of, you know, <laughs> whatever's going on in her brain. No, I think it's... All right, we'll uh, move on from this. We're going to talk about California a little bit more, though, because, you know, the, one of the things that's interesting is Trump closed the gap. Everywhere. Literally everywhere. And so, you know, even in, in blue states, but even in California... Yeah, I, I may have messed up on the... Even in red states, yeah. Yeah, they, they picked up on the red states, but no, even in California, he, he increased the percentages in every, all, every county but one. Yeah. His percentage of the vote increased what, in every single county but one. I don't know, probably out of the Bay Area. Marin. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but, every, but literally, and across the country, they had, uh, what was it, AP had a map yeah. that, where they had all the counties that, you know, that... The shift was, yep. and, you know, blue arrows went to the left, red arrows went to the right. Literally everything was to the right. Yeah. Every, all across the Every country. Every single county. Women voted 45% to tr for Trump. Yeah. Um, Hispanics. Not single women. But well, not women single women, general, yeah. but women. In so that means married women voted like 80% 80% to Trump. Yeah. So it's 45% women. Same thing for Hispanics, it was 45%. Um, the young black male showed up voting for, mm -hmm. for Trump. It, it's his coalition this time was much, much wider mm. than it was the last time. Yeah. And, you know, we talked about having to look in the mirror. Yeah. They're lo the Democrats have lost their hold on their demographics. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and we, we talked, we've talked in the past that they had a, a stranglehold on, on black population. If Malcolm X was alive today and allowed to speak, he would have made sure that didn't happen. But because um, said that you know, white liberals are the greatest enemy the, the black people have. Um, and, and it's true. Um, but he, especially uh, uh, young people, even. Yeah, Generation uh, X. Gen X. Well, or Gen Z. Z. No, Gen Z. Gen yeah. Z showed up for Trump. The youngest, the youngest, the first time voter, the Gen, the Gen Z. Those people showed up and they voted for Trump. Yeah, no, more than, not more than 50%. Yeah. Really? That's the last one I heard this morning. Now, maybe it's by the time this show airs, it may have changed, right? Because this is a week ago. And after the California ballots come in, that kind of may have evened out. But no, they showed up for Trump. Gen mm. Z showed up for Trump. But it's not that they're showing up for Trump. This is one of the things I want they're people... They're showing up against... Against the Democrats, against the far the left. And the deep state. Yes. And the, because they realize that the deep state runs their lives the way no political person can. Because you can actually vote a bad president out, or a bad senator out, or a bad representative out. You're going to replace him with an equal fool, but at least you can get rid of that fool. Yeah. Can't do it with bureaucrats. Can't do it with no. bureaucrats. And I wonder how much that squirrel and, you know, played a role. The did, he, did they euthanize him before the election? Yeah. Oh, it, it, that was about half a million votes, probably. It, I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if... It's, yeah, peanut and the there's squirrel. there's not that many people watching. The CNN will be lucky if it's got a half a million people watching now. Yeah, the, the squirrel yeah. had more viewers than, than CNN and MSNBC, probably oh, combined. Probably combined. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe Rogan's basically all traditional media. He has more people yeah, listening to him than yeah. all traditional People media. like Megyn Kelly have more viewers than CNN and MSNBC do. And Fox. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, there's, 
it's like two million nationwide at top on, on a three million on a really good day who watched cable news, network news, that type of thing. It's just not. They don't have the the power they had. But moving on to some California news, California regulators, and this one we just had to kind of come in because it was such of the. Uh, as Democrats talk about price controls mm -hmm. and complain about the price of gasoline and we're going to crack down on oil refineries and all that kind of stuff the Democrat just passed. But Friday, or last Friday, we don't know how the vote turned out, the, the CARB is going to vote on a, essentially increasing the, the rates that you pay at the gas pump mm -hmm. by like 65 cents a gallon. Mm -hmm. to, to basically... Subsidize electric cars. Yeah. So poor people who can't afford electric cars are going to be subsidizing rich people who well, can afford to buy the are. Rivians. They already are. There were people were paying, it's not so much anymore, $10,000 in tax credits to, to people who are buying $100,000 Teslas. Yeah, and then yeah. The, the real thing is these, the California Democrats are going to turn around and blame oil companies for high gas prices. They're going to try. Mm. Yeah. As always. Huh. Th this is a routine thing. We pass regulations well, wait, that increase prices. Drill. You won't let us have refineries here. You make us reconstitute our gas specifically for the California market, yet we're responsible for your high prices? Yeah, I, nobody believes that. Well, maybe 11 hardcore crazy Oh, people. The, the Marxists and whatnot of the Democrat Party yeah, believe yeah, it. Yeah. But, you know, that's what, 10, 13% of the Democrat Party at most? That's mm. yeah, 15% of college professors, which is kind of scary. <laughs> That is, well, there aren't that many Marxists in Cuba. When you talk about college, I, there was some college today, John. I just caught a story. I was browsing out this afternoon at lunch, and some college has stopped giving uh, oh, literature degrees. They, they're not worth it. They're just mm. not, they're not doing literature degrees anymore mm. because there's no value there. Mm. So, what, because of uh, AI or because? Be, because the, 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 the cost of those degrees far outweighs what you can recoup from having one. Mm. And well, so but you get a literature degree so that you a, a BA so that you can get an MA so you can get a PhD and be a communist literature teacher. <laughs> because that's the again, it's like what it's like arche, what is it? Oh, archaeology is the other one. Mm -hmm. it was, all, all you can do is continue your education so you be, can, can become a professor. Sociology, same thing. Yeah, there's a handful of them. There Psychology, are, same thing. Any of, any of the soft um, degrees, soft soft not in soft to easy because some of them are pretty hard especially trying to listen to those professors. But um, the, it's not, it's a stepping stone to a master, stepping stone to a PhD, which is then where you can work in a nonprofit or maybe for the government or teach. And, and even though there's way more college teachers than they need, I mean, there's one archeology span PhD teaching a class at a four-year university of 400 people. How many of them do you need? Yeah, yeah. all right, John, we've got for like four minutes and I okay. wanted to get actually to this Tahoe one, but RFK, Junior says entire departments at the FDA have to go. If that actually happens, it would be one of the few things that we'll, I will appreciate. The what? The, that I will appreciate. He says many departments in the FDA will have to go. Yeah. Yeah. I heard Elon Musk gave a speech or a, a talk the other day, um, and he said, we don't actually know how many federal departments there are. Mm. He says somewhere between 420 and 450, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> federal agencies? Federal yeah. agencies. Yeah. That's just federal agencies. Yeah. No, that's not state agencies. That's not state, just that's not federal. All the, all the NGOs that are paid for by the government. Correct. Yeah. That's just official yeah. federal agencies. We don't act, he says, he searched Google, he asked the AI, and he does cannot come up with a clear answer mm -hmm. because nobody actually knows. And so, yeah, you know, when you try to do too much, you end up doing nothing well, and that's what we see here in California and then across yeah. the nation. We probably have two times the agencies in California than any other state, including New York has. I'll bet yeah. you, I'll bet you. We need Javier Millet and his, and his chainsaw is <laughs> <laughs> so what we could use. Okay, we gotta move on because this Tahoe one is actually, I want to go, uh, Tahoe voters rejected a, the, what they call a controversial housing law, but they rejected it by like 75% to 20. So I'm not sure how controversial it is it, when it was rejected so soundly. It's basically a wealth tax. Yes. So they wanted to tax second homes up like $6,000 a year if you didn't live there more than half the year. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a vacation home in, in Tahoe and maybe you rent it out at, on Verbo or, or mm -hmm. Airbnb during- Which are all the same thing now. Yeah, but you rent those things out. Yeah. You know, you are gonna pay an extra $6,000 just because. No, just because. Just because, so they can use it for uh, you know, affordable housing, which we all dang well here know that the most expensive housing is affordable housing. Mm -hmm. 
If you want housing, to, you, to get housing, you just get out the way. Mm -hmm. Get out the way. That's what you do in Austin, that's what you do in Houston. You look at anywhere where, where housing is affordable, it's because they don't have the regulations we have here in California. Yep. All right. Two more, two minutes left. So we got this one last topic here. Rent control, Prop 33, which we didn't cover last week, or maybe we did. I don't know. <laughs> it's not dead. It's an opinion piece in the Sacramento Bee. Though Prop 33 failed mm -hmm. hugely. It's mm -hmm. not like it failed by a couple percentage points. It massively went down mm -hmm. in, in, in flames. The fight for tenant rights don't stop. Well, this well, is they actually... call it tenant rights. <sighs> It's crazy because yeah. this kind of rent control is what destroys people's ability to have places because nobody's going to build a place knowing that, yeah, they can charge whatever the market is right now, but next week they can't, right? right? Or next year they can't. And then California decides, gets to decide what an appropriate profit percentage the, the landlord can have. Yeah. And we know this, right? We know from San Francisco, from New York, from Baltimore, from all these places that have, have rent control, strict rent controls, are the worst places for poor people to live. Mm -hmm. We know this for a fact. This has been shown time and time and time again, yeah. but yet these people continue well, to come out. Well, mostly in this, there's one guy that owns a nonprofit that's basically paying for these things every year with taxpayer dollars, and, and maybe we'll just do a little segment on that guy. You got 30 and, seconds, John. Uh, I don't remember his name, but he runs this nonprofit that that gives drugs to uh, people who don't have means, um, and then he charges the federal government for the full price, but he gets them subsidized, and he takes that money, millions of dollars every year, and, and puts these propositions for rent control up. He's the one behind these. And yeah. so that Prop 34 was trying to stop him. That's all it was do doing, was yep. trying to stop him. Activists never stop. Even when they've been shown time and time again that their policy is bad and that the people don't want it, they will continue to try. Mm. They will continue to lie and manipulate facts to get their way. And that's it for us tonight. I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining me, John. Thank the crew inside for working very hard. But most importantly, thank you for watching. Check, it, check us out next week. Have a good night. And please remember to love everybody. Love everybody.